This is part 12 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss a few simple real-time examples of way we can use index of, last index of, and substring methods. This is continuation to part 11, so please watch part 11 before proceeding. First, let's look at an example of using index of and substring methods. This is what we want to achieve. In the email address text box, the end user is going to enter his email address. For example, here we entered venkat.k at prajimtech.com. And if you look at this email address, it has got two parts within it. The first part is the email itself, that is venkat.k. And the second part is the domain name, that is prajimtech.com. And we have this at character separating the email from the domain name. So when we click this get email and domain paths button, what we want to do is get that email path, that is venkat.k, and display that in the email path text box. And the domain part, that is prajimtech.com, should be displayed in domain part text box. So let's see how to achieve this very easily using index of and substring methods. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I've already typed the required HTML to get this user interface, and here is that HTML. Uh, this HTML is very straightforward, so I'm not going to go into the HTML. I will have this HTML available on my blog in case you need it. So let's go ahead and write our JavaScript function. So within the script section, let's create a function. Let's call this get email and domain paths. The first thing that we need to do is retrieve the email address that the user has typed into the text box. So let's create a variable. Let's call this email address equals, we are going to use the document object dot get element by ID method. And we need to pass the ID of the text box into which the end user is going to type their full email address. And the ID is txt email address. So let's pass that to this function. And then once we have the reference of that text box, dot value should give us the value that is present within the text box. So we now have the email address. So let's create a variable to get the email part from the email address. So here we have the variable which is going to store that. Now we have the email address within this variable. And email address is a string. So we can use dot substring method. And now, to get a substring, we need to specify from which character do we want to start the extraction. We want to start the extraction from 0th character. okay? And then we want the extraction to end just before the at symbol. That's where you know we have the complete email part. okay? So how do we get to know the position of the at character within that string, we can use the index of method. So again, we use the string email address dot index of, and we want the index of the at symbol. Okay, so start at this position, which is at index position zero, that is from the first character, and retrieve all the characters until this at symbol. So that's going to give us the email part. Similarly, now let's go ahead and retrieve the domain part. So where domain part equals. So to retrieve the domain part, we have to start, you know, wherever we have the at character, you know, we have to start one character of the wherever we have that at symbol. So again, we're going to use the substring method. So email address dot substring of. Now we don't want to start at zeroth character. We want to start wherever we have this at symbol and then go all the way till the end of the string. Okay? So we have the email part, domain parts. Now all that is left is to display those within the respective text boxes. So if you look at the ID of the text box where we want to display the email part, it is txt email part. So let's copy that. And then let's use the document object dot get element by ID. And then we are going to pass the email part text box dot value equals email part. And similarly, let's display the domain part. 
and domain part should be displayed in txt domain part text box. So let's paste that there and let's call this JavaScript function when we click the button on the web form. So here we have the HTML button and on click we want to call this JavaScript function get email and domain parts. Alright, so with this change let's go ahead and run this and we are going to have a small problem here. We'll fix that in just a bit. First let's look at the problem. So email address, let's enter venkat.k at prajimtech.com and when we click this, look at that, it gives the email part venkat.k as expected. Now the domain name should actually be prajimtech.com. I don't want the at symbol. Okay, and the reason we are getting that at symbol is because you know we are starting wherever uh, you know we have the set character. Okay, using that index, but we don't want to do that. We want to start one character after where we have the set symbol. So just use plus one there, and now we should get the behavior that we expect. So Winkert dot k at prajimtech.com Look at that. Venkat.k is the email part. Prajimtech.com is the domain part. Now, in part 11, we dis discuss about last index of method. So first, let's look at what is this last index of method. This method returns the position of the last occurrence of a specified value in a string. If you look at index of method, it is going to return the uh, index position of the first occurrence of a specified string. But this method is going to return us the last occurrence of a specified value in a given string. So since this method's job is to return the last index of the specified value from a performance standpoint you know to improve the performance of this function what it is going to do is it's going to search the given string from the end to the beginning and then it returns the index of the first match it finds because there's no point in starting at the uh, first character and then going through the entire string because if you start at the end of the string and then the first time you find the specified value then you know that is going to be the last index of that character and the method is simply going to return that without actually scanning the rest of the string that means it's going to improve the performance of that method now this method just like index of method is going to return minus one if it does not find the specified value in the given string so here is a simple example we have uh, my blog URL there and if you look at that URL it has got this dot character present three times within that string. So once after www and second time here and third time here. Now when we say we want the last index of that dot character within that URL variable then it's going to return the index of this dot symbol and the index of that dot symbol is 42 and that's what we get. Now Let's look at another example of using this last index of method and substring method. So within the website URL we can type any URL that we want and when we click this get top level domain button we want to retrieve the domain name that is for this website the domain is Dot com. You know, you may have .NET websites, .edu websites, etc. So whatever is the top level domain name, we want to retrieve that and display that within the top level domain text box. So let's see how to achieve this using last index of and substring methods. Uh, first of all, we need to get that user interface and again to speed things up, I already have the HTML here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it within our web form. So instead of this table, I'm going to paste the table that we have just copied. And we don't need this JavaScript function anymore. So let's actually get rid of this one. And let's rename this method to get domain name. And 
if you look at the design of this web form you know in this text box we are going to enter the website URL and we want to retrieve uh, the domain name and display that within this text box when we click this button so first we need a variable to retrieve the URL that the user has typed so variable URL equals document dot get element by ID and we need to pass the text box of the I mean the ID of the first text box which is txt URL dot value so that should give us whatever URL the user has typed into the text box and we have that within this variable all that is left now is to use another variable let's call this maybe domain name equals URL dot we are going to use substring method and what we want to do is retrieve the last index of the dot character within the URL because a URL may contain you know multiple characters within that for example multiple dot characters within it for example if you look at this you know we have dot here we have dot here and we have dot here so once we get the last index of the uh, dot character from that position you know get all the characters that are present within that string till the end of the string okay so it's as simple as that so we are going to use the URL dot last index of and then we want the last index of dot character so what we are saying with this line here is start at that index position and retrieve all the characters that are present after that okay and then obviously this variable is going to contain our domain name and all that is left now is to display the value that is present in that variable within the domain name text box so document dot get element by ID and this is the target text box where we want to display the domain name dot value equals whatever value that's present in that variable so let's run this uh, we need to specify the on click attribute for the button control so let's copy the function name go all the way down and then set the on click attribute and let's enter for example www.prajimtech.com and when we click on get a top level domain notice that dot com now let's say for example we we have the Prajim Tech URL like this Prajim Tech dot blog dot net for example now when I click get top level domain we should get dot net notice that thank you for listening and have a great day